The title of the sermon this morning is The Power of Consistency. The Power of Consistency. Now, what is consistency? Consistency is doing something regularly without fail, isn't it? This is, it goes hand in hand with discipline. And this is the verse I want to take from Luke chapter 9. I know Luke, was a, Luke 9 was a long chapter. But the verse I want to take from Luke 9 is in verse 23. And it says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Look at this. Daily and follow me. So consistency is doing in the Christian life, is doing what is right regularly, whether you feel like it or not. Right, so in the Christian life, it's a daily thing that we have to do. It's not just an event that happens and now you're a Christian. You know, that's salvation. But living the Christian life is something that requires consistency. And consistency is doing what is right regularly, whether you like, whether you feel like it or not. I like this quote. I don't know if you heard of this quote from Mike Tyson. Just thought sometimes sports stars give really good quotes in terms of just discipline and consistency. Mike Tyson said when he when he was young, and it was you know you know what sort of background he has. He's not a, he's not a very godly character, but you know he had coaches that were trying to teach him discipline, and this is a quote that's attributed to him. It says discipline is doing what you hate to do, but doing it like you love it, and it's a, it's a bit similar to the Christian life, isn't it? Because we got the spirit and the flesh. The flesh hates doing what's right. The spirit loves doing what's right. So this is almost like, you know, the things that the, the flesh hates, those are the things you've got to do like you love it because the spirit loves to do it. So the Christian life is the same. You know, it requires consistency. And the Bible talks to this about being consistent whether it's in season or out of season. This is a good verse in 2 Timothy 4. This is uh, Paul talking to Timothy, or writing to Timothy and encouraging him to be consistent in his spiritual life. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. So this is being consistent in the way he teaches. He says, be instant in season, out of season. See, that's the consistency there because he's consistent whether it's popular whether it's not popular, whether it's something that people want to hear or people don't want to hear. He's saying, keep preaching God's word. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Why? Because one day it's going to be out of season, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. You see the consistency there? Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Another verse that reminds me of being consistent in the Christian life. You know, doing things regularly, doing what is right, regardless of the circumstances, the feeling, you know, uh, you know whether it's popular, whether it's not popular. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. See, not sometimes abounding in the work of the Lord, not, about, not abounding in the work of the Lord when you feel like it, not abounding in the work of the Lord when you've got all your life in order. No, it's always abounding in the work of the Lord because we're always meant to be prioritizing the things of God regardless of of what else is going on in our lives. For as much as you know, look, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See, anything you do for God is not in vain because it has an eternal reward, an eternal payoff, because God sees all the work we do and he will reward us in due time. So success in life, as well as the Christian life, it requires consistency. And that's the point I want to drive home today is the power of consistency. You know, we talked about the power of prayer a couple of weeks ago. We want to tap into that untapped resource. What's well, the same with consistency? You know, you want to tap into the power of consistency because you can accomplish great things just by doing the small things regularly. 
So let's talk a bit about consistency. First point I have here is consistency forms good habits. Consistency forms good habits. So in Galatians 6, 9, the Bible says here, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. See how the Bible says you can be weary in well-doing? Because see, doing what's right is not always easy. You know, living the Christian life, just even in life, trying to do what's right to build good habits is not easy. Think about exercise. You know, exercise is good for us. You know, we live in a very placid society. You, know, you, can, you can get everything delivered to your door now. We've got all the machines doing everything that we need to do. Don't even have to go and make your own food. Now you've got Uber, right? You deliver it right to your doorstep. So we live in a day and age where, you know, in order to remain healthy, you really need to make it a point to, to exercise and to be active. You know, take up a sport or lift weights or go run, swim, do something to stay active. You know, it's not, a, it's not a good thing for Christians to be not healthy. You know, we want to we be healthy so that we can be a more effective for Jesus Christ. So exercise is a, is a good example of consistency. You know, we've all seen on, you know, online the, the transformation videos. And they're always very inspiring, aren't they? You know, they, they show the before and after videos. You know, I was watching one just a couple of days ago because I'm, I'm trying to get back into, like, you know, doing pull-ups. You know, there's this scrawny guy, like, you know, just trying to do all the different push-ups. And then it's five years later, he's like full on like a tank and just doing like the, the push-ups. Like, it's, you know, the people that do those, those pull-ups and they can just like walk in the air, like they're pretending to walk, but it's, it's all through their arms. So I think what's inspiring when we watch those videos is because we know, it's sort of, we know ourselves in our own conscience that if we just do the little steps the little consistency every day, we could accomplish great things. And this is what these videos remind us of. You know, it's inspiring what consistency can accomplish. And you know, when it comes to exercise, you know, we should all be exercising. You don't have to start with some insane workout. You know, me and my wife talk about it all the time. It's, you know, we get lazy trying to exercise. But, you know, what's more important is just the consistency. You know, even if you just did a little bit every day, the consistency will achieve more than just, you know, you go and work yourself crazy and you get into it and then you stop for months and months on end and you try and get into it again. But if you just did a little bit, you know, a few push-ups every day, a few sit-ups every day, a little, little bit of weights every day, you know, just go on that 10-minute, 15-minute jog every day, those small things will build up, don't they? So if you create good habits as well, through consistency. It also means it's easier to continue when the motivation goes away. So if you start doing things consistently, you start small, you build that good habit, right? And then it's easier to continue because now not only is it getting easier, but now you've built that habit to keep, to keep going. Now, when we think about consistency in life, and consistency with exercise, the same applies to our spiritual life. So, this is why the power of consistency is very important because not only does it apply to practical, physical things, but it applies to the spiritual as well. So when we think about church, you know, the Bible says about church, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Now, you want to build a habit of being in church regularly. Some people get out of the habit. And I understand, you know, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't raised in a Christian family. You know, I was saved when I was 19. You know, lazy teenager. You know, so I understand not wanting to wake up on Sunday mornings. You know, especially when you're like a lazy teenager, you know, during school holidays or uni holidays, you're getting up at like 11, 12 o'clock. You know, having to get up at 9 o'clock in the morning is like really early. But, you know, for now, people, those of us that work, you know, we, we get up even earlier than that. But, you know, you just got to start doing it. You need to build that habit. That's why, it, that's why it's, it's so important to be in church, whether you feel like it or not. Because not only is it good for you to be amongst God's people, it's good for you to be under the preaching but it's also building a good habit, right? Because there's going to come the day when you don't feel like being in church, 
right? And it's harder to be in church. And you've got other distractions. You've got the, like the Bible talks about the thorns of the world, the cares and the riches and pleasures of this life. But you know, when, if you are on the right path at one point in your spiritual life and you're consistent and you're going to church and you make it part of your routine and you put it in your schedule, then when you don't feel like doing it, it's going to be easier to get back in because now there's going to be that habit formed where it's not going to feel right when you're not out. And you want that habit. You want those good spiritual habits so that when you start backsliding, it's easier to get back in rather than just backsliding and quitting church altogether. So church is one example. You know, prayer is another example. First Thessalonians 5 says, pray without ceasing. You know, uh, we have a, a practice in our family, which I think is good. Uh, you know, before we go to bed, we sort of get together as a family we read a chapter of the Bible and we spend some time in prayer. And uh, recently, probably like maybe six, I don't know how long we've been doing it now, since uh, Gersh was printing the prayer list. I appreciate all the stuff Gersh does for church. You know, he's printing the prayer list. So now we take a prayer list home and, and now when we spend that time in prayer before we go to bed, we, we pray for a couple of prayer requests too. And so not only is that good for us, you know, and for our spiritual life, but it's forming good habits, not just for us, but for our children as well. So... You know, we, we set these sort of things in motion, schedule them in, and we you know, do something daily because it, that consistency, you know, m ensures not only that we're doing it, but it's building good habits as well. So we know, hey, we didn't pray today. So we have a time that's set aside to pray. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Now look at it in Luke 18. Luke 18 has a, a great parable of the unjust judge. And it really gives us some good insight into how God expects us as Christians to pray. Luke 18, it says here, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. So she wanted justice from this unjust judge. And he would not for a while. So he's ignoring her. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, look at this, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. What is this unjust judge saying? He's saying, I'm just going to deal with this because this lady is just annoying me. Right? Just keeps coming. She won't let up. And this is what the unjust judge said. Verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? So you see that? God is saying, you see, the unjust judge is willing to deal with an issue just to get rid of something. And saying, isn't God even more righteous than that? How much more will God do if his children come to him and cry day and night unto him? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. It requires a lot of faith to pray. Why is that? Because prayer is the one thing that you're asking somebody else to do completely. Everything else in the Christian life is something that you do. But when you pray, you're actually completely committing it to God to do. And that's why it requires a lot of faith, because everything else you somewhat play a part in besides just asking somebody else to do it. So we're saying here, when Jesus returns... You know, how much faith will be, will be on the earth. So prayer is another one. You know, we want to build a habit of, of praying consistently, praying daily. Another one is reading God's word. You know, Luke 4.4, 4, Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You know, the Lord's prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. So just like you don't eat every Sunday, should you be reading your Bible only every Sunday? No, we should be reading our Bible daily, right? And that's the importance of consistency. You know, you want to break down big things into smaller steps. So let's go on. So consistency, it forms good habits. So you want to make sure that you're doing things consistently. Number two, consistency develops skills. Consistency develops skills. Look what the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians 9. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, 
but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. So what is Paul telling us here? He's saying we should live our Christian life like a competition. Like, you know, we, we should strive to excel in our Christian life. Like he's saying here, like when people run in a race, they run to win. So we ought to live our Christian life in a way that we run to win. You know, not everyone is living their Christian life that way. Some people are just coasting in the Christian life. Some people are not even in the race. But no, we want to not only be in the race, but we want to try and win the race. That's a, this is talking about excelling in the Christian life. But what's the example we're bringing here? Well, consistency developing skills. It says, that every man that striveth for the mastery, see, when somebody tries to develop a skill, is temperate in all things, right? They're disciplined. There's some moderation there. There's some discipline and consistency in the practice. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So what is he saying there? They're willing to be consistent and go to all that work to earn something that is corruptible, earn something that is temporary. But what we do when we live the Christian life, the rewards we earn are incorruptible. They are eternal. So even more so, there's more incentive for us to be disciplined and consistent. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So when I think about consistency developing skills, you know, I think about sports. That's why I had the quote from Mike Tyson. Um, I've got this quote here from Bruce Lee. I don't know if you heard this quote. Bruce Lee said, he said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So this quote talks to consistency. And I think about sports. You know, sports, when it comes to skills in sports, it requires repetition, doesn't it? See, I grew up, you know, playing badminton. And... You know, I find, uh, you know, learning a sport, I think, you know, when you're training, it's, it's very similar, depending on what the sport is. Obviously, you're doing different moves, but the way you train for a sport is, is very similar. You know, you'll learn the technique, and then you drill in the technique, and, and that's why in sport you have drills and repetitions, and you do it again and again, because why? You're trying to form that habit, but then the more you do it, the better you get at it as well. And this is what this quote here is referring to, that, you know, rather than somebody doing... 10,000 different things just once. It's not the same as somebody doing one thing 10,000 times. And, you know, when I was training in badminton, so I, I used to play badminton for WA when I grew up in WA and sort of represented the state. But I just remember training, you know, the, the coach. He'd just have this big funnel of shuttlecocks. That's what that little feather thing is called. And he's literally just like throwing them one after another. And we're just standing at the net, just like smashing, smashing. <laughs> And I, countless times, smashing, smashing, smashing and, but, you know, that's how you build that habit. And, you know, nowadays I, I see people today, you know, they try and play badminton and they just haven't formed those habits through that repetition. And you can see, they just, even though they may be stronger than me, they may be faster than me, but they, they just don't have that skill. And I, I realized that with, with soccer as well. I tried to play soccer. And I just don't have, I don't know whether it's the hip movement or the leg movement, but you know, people that play soccer, they can just whip their hip and, and kick it really fast. And you know, if you haven't developed that skill, you know, you haven't put in the repetitions, you just can't do it the same way as somebody that has done that sport competitively. So, you know, a great saying that uh, I've heard is, you know, we always hear practice makes perfect, but I like the saying practice makes permanent. Because the more you do something, you know, the more it stays with you. And, and that's what this quote is sort of referring to. So even in a sport, you know, natural talent only gets you so far. And it's the same in the Christian life. You know, we, we have our natural talents and abilities. But we can improve just like you improve in playing in a sport. The more repetition you do, the more you read your Bible. The more you go soul winning, the more you try and explain things, you actually get better at doing it and practice makes permanent. But when you don't practice it, you start to forget things. And the Bible talks about that. You know, we have to be doers of the word, not hearers only. All right, otherwise we forget. So in the Christian life, 
There is a work to do. 2 Timothy 4, watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Now, when you think about your own profession, what you do for work, I'm sure you're very good at it. Why is that? Because you do it every day. You know, yes, you're paid to do it, so you've got that incentive there. You know, with spiritual things, we need to look to eternity to find our incentive. But because we do that work every day, you do it very well. And if somebody else tries to do your job, you know, they, they're thinking, wow, you, 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 did you do it so well? How do you do it so well? Well, you, you should do it well because you do it every day. So it's the same in the spiritual life. You know, when it comes to the work of the ministry, the more you do it, the better you get. And this is why consistency is important. You've got to keep doing it and you will improve. It's just a matter of time because the more you do it, the better you will get. All right, let's go on. Number three. Number three, consistency builds success. Consistency builds success. So I kind of alluded to it at the beginning. You know, when people do small things, it accomplishes great things. But that's what consistency does. If you do small acts regularly, it adds up to big change. You know, anytime you hear about goal setting, you know, you want to strive for big goals. You know, one thing I believe in, you know, you, I always learn, you know, you should shoot for the stars because maybe it'll hit the moon. You, know, you should aim high, because even if you don't reach that goal, you know, you'll probably go further than you would have intended if you reach further than you could have gone. But you know, when they talk about goal setting, those big goals, you break them down into those daily steps. So you, know, you have one goal, you've got to figure out, hey, what do I have to do every year? What do I have to do every month? Break it down to what I have to do every day. And if you can break that big goal down into smaller steps, and you just start consistently doing the small steps, you know you're eventually going to reach that big goal. And that happens in all, all types of goals. I mean, think about financial goals. You know, you're taught as a child. You know, if you want to save up this amount of money, you know, you break it down, how much you need to save every year, how much do you need to save every month, how much you need to save every week. And then when you make money every week, you put away that little bit, you put away that little bit, you put away that little bit. And then over time, wow, you realize, man, I've saved up a whole lot of money. And then, you know, with, with interest, you know, and it compounds. You know, and some people say, you know, that's the 11th, what is it, 11th wonder of the world, you know, compounding interest. And it just keeps, keeps growing. But the same principle of, you know, building up this momentum and this effort compounding happens in the Christian life too. And this is why we, the power of consistency and have doing things consistently is so important. Look what the Bible says in Isaiah 28, 9, when it comes to learning, learning the Bible. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. You see, when it comes to learning the Bibles, it's not often that it's just one big bit of information that just sticks with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, sometimes there'll be often, sometimes there'll be that thing that you just learn and it just sticks with you. But generally what happens in the Christian life is you listen to a little bit here, you listen, you know, you're not going to remember 100% of this sermon, but you might remember one bit. And you hear another sermon, and you remember one bit. And then you read this thing online, you take one thing from it. And you listen to a sermon on YouTube, you take one thing from it. And as you're consistently listening to God's Word through your own reading, through preaching, you know, it builds up until you realize, well, you have all this knowledge, but it's not because you learned it all in one go, it's because you were consistently learning little bit by little bit. Like the Bible says here, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little, that they might go and fall backward 
and be broken and snared and taken. So when we learn, it's the same. It's just a small learning builds up. Soul winning as well. You know, sometimes people go soul winning, they try it for a couple of weeks, and then they think soul winning doesn't work. Well, it requires consistency, doesn't it? You keep going, you keep going. It's a numbers game. You know, like evangelism is just like sales. You talk to enough people, eventually you're going to find people that want to hear, and of the people that want to hear, people are ready to get saved, and you'll reap that reward. And this consistency is kind of alluded to in this analogy when it comes to soul winning in 1 Corinthians 3. It says here, Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So you see there that evangelism is likened to growing trees. You know, and it takes a long time to grow trees. You've got to take care of them. Anyone's done gardening, it takes consistent work, plant, you know, planting, taking care of it, taking care of it, getting rid of the weeds, getting rid of the pests, you know, and eventually you reap a harvest. God gives the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God giveth the increase. Psalm 126.6, He that goeth forth and weepeth, Bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So one thing about consistency is the more you do something, the better you get at it, the easier it gets. So this is why when you, even when we talk about exercise or we talk about anything where it requires consistency, there's always like a steeper effort at the beginning. But as you are consistent, and as you regularly do things, it gets easier, doesn't it? And we see that in areas of life, whether it's learning a skill, whether it's exercising. Um, you know, one thing I want to talk about in this next verse is it's the same when it comes to children. You know, when you're consistent with the standards that you keep, with the habits that you teach them, you teach them a little bit every day, as they get older, you start to reap the benefits of that consistency, right? So just like it is with exercise, just like it is with spiritual things, it's the same when it comes to raising our children. Deuteronomy 6.6 6 says here, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So you can see the consistency there in that it's just teaching children all the time, every day when they're with you. It's not necessarily sit down, have the children listen to a two-hour you know, seminar on how to behave as children. It's the small daily things as they're with you, talking to them when they're, they're sitting with them, when you're walking with them, when you lie with them, when you rise up, right? And as, it, you know, this consistency, it creates momentum. Things get easier as you get better and you start to reap the rewards of the investments that you put in. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, if we're consistent, if you view the power of consistency, doing that thing regularly, you will reap if you don't quit, right? So the, you have to not quit in order for that consistency to help you, to be consistent. Galatians 6, 9. So we already looked at this verse. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now the last thing I want to talk about is, see, the power of consistency is like a double-edged sword. And you want to you harness the power of consistency in order to do things good, in order to do things right, things that will benefit you, not only physically, but also spiritually. But the power of consistency, you need to beware, because it can work against you as well, unwillingly. right? Because if you do the wrong things day in, day out, now you're going to be forming not good habits, but bad habits. You know, and it's, then it's going to be harder to do the right thing. Because well, why? Because it's, it's becoming easier to do the wrong thing. 
<laughs> and because we have this the gravity of sin, you know, like gravity is always pulling things down, always pulling things to the earth. Because we have sin acting like gravity in our spiritual lives, it's so much easier to start doing the wrong things than it is to start doing the right things to build up those good habits. It's so much easier to build the wrong habits. Look what the Bible says here about the sluggard in Proverbs 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? Look at this. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. So you see how the sluggard's life goes to poverty. Another passage in Proverbs I don't have in my notes today is when Solomon goes past the field of the sluggard. And it's all just grown over with nettles and with weeds. And he says he looks at it and he learns. And he says, hey, he says the same lesson at the end of Proverbs 6. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Yeah, so shall thy poverty come as one that travels and thy wants as an armed man. You know that passage in Proverbs, it reminds me of, um, have you seen those videos on YouTube of the guy, there's a guy from SB Mowing, and he goes and he mows people's lawns for free. Have you seen that guy? Yeah, yeah. He, he mows people's lawns for free because obviously he gets the money from the, the monetization on YouTube. And you see these gardens, they're absolutely insane. And you end up, you, you know, that's probably why these videos do so well, because you're just like, this garden is crazy. And then he starts like mowing it all down and cleaning it all up, and the transformation's crazy. But how did that place get like that? Well, it didn't happen, they didn't grow overnight, did it? It got like that, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. So we need to be wary because the power of consistency can work against us if we don't purpose in our heart to be consistently doing the right things. So you don't want to be consistent in skipping church, consistent in skipping your Bible reading, consistent in not praying, consistent in not soul winning, you know, consistent in you know, bad habits, Bad examples, what effect that's going to have on your children. You know, consistent in procrastination. You know, consistent in, you know, in procrastination in, in self-improvement, doing things to improve yourself. You know, consistent, you know, wasting money on vain things and other bad habits. Why? Because the more you do these things, it's going to do the opposite effect. You're going to, it's going to ingrain bad habits, and now it's going to work towards terrible things in the future. You know, how do people get to a certain point in their life? It doesn't always happen overnight. You know, what happens is it's the small things, and they're just slowly going in that direction. And, you know, people who were once on fire for God, you know, where are they now? You know, they're out. They, they don't care for things. And you say, well, how did they get there? Well, it didn't happen overnight. It's the slow, consistent, not doing the right things that takes them to that place. All right, so we need to be aware of that. So in conclusion, what I want to drive home today, consistency. Do the small things regularly. Be consistent. Then you'll form good habits. Be easier to maintain. You know, you develop skills, not only physically, but spiritually. You know, spiritually, we require skill development. Consistency builds success. So not only in the physical life, you know, you do small things consistently, it builds up to big goals, but spiritually as well, right? And if you don't, beware, because the power of consistency can work against you. All right, let's pray. Lord, we uh, thank you for your word. Lord, we need grace. We need your help. Even though it's so easy to teach, Lord, it's so easy to talk about, it's not easy to do. Because being consistent in the spiritual life requires us to walk in the spirit and we're constantly battling against the flesh. But Lord, help us. Help us to start small. Help us to remain faithful. 
and help us to be consistent in our spiritual lives so that we can grow. Lord, we want to do great things for you and great things start by doing the small things consistently. So we thank you, Lord, for your word today. We pray for each and every one here. Help us to be consistent in our spiritual lives so that the power of consistency doesn't work against us like the slogan. So we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.